Ambassador Aro, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Um, it's a year now since the horrific, tragic Paris attacks. How has France changed as a result of those attacks over the past year? Has it changed? Well, I guess, you know, when you are a victim of such a terrorist attack, uh, the, there is always a shift in the very uneasy balance that you have between law enforcement and liberty. You know, really. So it's, it's unavoidable. It was the case in this country in the 9-11. So the French government has been obliged to take some security measures, uh, which has shifted the balance towards law enforcement, while keeping, uh, of, of course, our fundamental liberties. Your critics say that your response, your government's response to the Paris attacks and to the many attacks that have taken place since then has been heavy handed over the top. Human Rights Watch say the French Parliament's decision to prolong the country's state of emergency undermines human rights and the rule of law. Amnesty International has warned against the disproportionate and discriminatory use of emergency measures, including late night house raids. UN human rights experts have also sounded the alarm bell. What's your response to these critics? You know, I think they are doing their job. Uh, and, and I think we need this sort of criticism. We are a democracy. As I have said, uh, in these times of crisis, there are some law enforcement requirements. Uh, we have to move into this direction, but it's very important that we keep our values. And I think that this type of criticisms are, are very useful. Uh, are they accurate? Uh, I'm not sure they are accurate. I think they are putting a pressure on us and obliging us, looking at each measure, whether it's effective and, and whether, again, it's respecting our, our liberties. We do believe that so far we have kept the balance right, we are, but they are allowed to, to not to agree with us. You say that the state of emergency is part of a tilt towards law enforcement, mm. security, effective measures. Um, and yet a French commission of inquiry into the Paris attacks concluded in July of this year that the state of emergency has had limited impact on improving security. I mean, the Nice truck attack in July occurred during the state of emergency. In fact, as of this summer, more than three and a half thousand warrantless raids and 400 people placed under house arrest had resulted in only six, six te terrorism related criminal investigations. That's, that's, uh, that's a success. Even, even really? if there was one, it would be a success because it means that even if we have saved one life, I think it will be a success. You know, it's, it's very difficult when a democratic society is facing such a threat to find the right, again, the right answer. And, 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 and again, um, I think we deserve some criticisms, but I, I, I think that we were obliged to take all the measures we considered as necessary. And again, even if there are, we have avoided you know, six, uh, six attacks, it would be an incredible success. Even if there are 394 innocent people suffered as a result of it. But if we have saved one human life, so I then, think it so was there's deserving. No, so then there's no, that's, not, that's not a balance between liberty and security. That's saying security trumps liberty. No, 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 no. It's not a security. Because, you know, these measures, you know, again, we do consider they, they have been, uh, they went to the high court and our high court, constitutional court, said they are constitutional. So uh, we do consider that we have preserved our basic liberties. The, the state of emergency, you know, it's for six months. So the parliament will have to decide uh, what, but, if, if we keep it or no. But, for example, 24 environmental activists who were put under house arrest last year um, as a result of this state of emergency in the run-up to the Paris climate talks, they might say, what about our liberties? You're saying the liberties have been preserved. They're not, quote-unquote, jihadists. They're not, quote-unquote, terrorists of any kind. And yet the French government used a state of emergency brought in after the Paris attacks no, because to you tackle know, environmental activists. No, no. First, How do you, you justify that? Uh, you know, we had this, uh, the meeting in Paris about um, climate change in, in December, which meant that, you know, 40,000 people were coming to Paris. We had more than 100 head of state and government. Uh, so we couldn't take, you know, really, we had to be extremely careful. So you decided it to was, use powers that were brought in to a, deal with quote-unquote jihadist terrorism mm -hmm. against environmental activists. You no, think that's right? Uh, the, the right that's the, a misuse the, of those the, powers. The, the law it was not against jihadist terrorism, it was to, against any uh, form of terrorism. But these 24 you know, were not really terrorists. And these 24 these, activists were I, not terrorists. I think that if they have been arrested, I'm not privy to the to Well, the, the interior the minister, file. your interior minister but, uh, said these people have no connection at all with the terrorist movement. But, but they, I guess they, they, they were considered as dangerous for, for, for the meeting. And I'm, they are not anymore in, in prison anyway. You are aware, aren't you, that governments that the West has long considered mm. authoritarian, illiberal, for example, the Turkish government is often criticised mm. by EU governments mm. such as your own. 
they now point to France's state of emergency mm. as a justification for their own crackdowns, their own anti-terror legislation. They say if France can do it, why can't we? That must make you uncomfortable. No, it doesn't make me uncomfortable because, you know, really, it's, it's their, their rhetoric, you know, really. So I, it's not I don't care. But they are I actually don't doing care. similar things. To They're be bringing frank, states of emergency. To be really frank, I don't care about, about this rhetoric. What I am facing is my country, which is threatened. And it's threatened to see we have had 250 French citizens killed by terrorists. We have to face it. We are in a war against terrorism, but at the same time, we know that we have some values to preserve. Okay. We are trying to do it. We are committing mistakes, but I do think that we are genuinely trying to do the best way we can. Well, let's talk about why you're being attacked and the threat that France undoubtedly faces. It's become a top target for groups such mm. as ISIL and Al-Qaeda. Is it maybe because France has a pretty hawkish foreign policy, especially in the Middle East and North Africa, from Libyan regime change to the intervention in Mali to the ongoing military action in Syria? Is that what makes it more of a target than most other Western nations? Well, I th again, that's totally hypothetical. What I, what I know is that first uh, we have the first Muslim community uh, in, in, in Europe. Secondly, that most of the French Muslims are uh, from Arab origin, which means that they are very sensitive uh, to what is happening in the Middle East. In Germany, there are Turks. In, in the UK, they are coming from India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. So they are culturally, and I should say linguistically also, much less sensitive to, happen, to what is happening in the so Middle East. You're accepting there's a link between what's you know, happening in the Middle East and France's role. No, no, I think home. what I'm saying is the Muslim population in, uh, 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 in France, like actually like in Belgium, where also mm. most of the Muslims are Arabs, you know, is very sensitive to the propaganda of, the, of ISIS, because simply this propaganda is coming in Arabic and in coming about what is happening in the Middle East. And how the French Muslims are very sensitive to it. But when uh, various terrorism security experts say that as you increase military action in a place, you will face more action at home, you don't buy that link. You know, what we have to do, we have enemies, we have identifiable enemies, and we have to fight these enemies. So, uh, you know, ISIS is attacking us. You are not going to ask us to say to, I oh, we don't want to, that, to hurt these people, you know, because if they are, uh, they are angry, they will be still more offensive. No, we want to defeat ISIS. That's war, you know, really. And you are not trying to think about and whether you are hurting your enemy or you are not hurting your yeah, enemy. But if you're exacerbating the conflict, really? for example, the US-led war on terror, many people would argue really? that the American response to 9-11, the French government, in fact, argued this back in the day in the run-up to Iraq, was creating more terrorists than it was killing. We, we never that. was the French that. government position no. back in no, 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 no. What the French government was saying was invading Iraq. We never discussed the way the, the Americans were reacting to 9-11 because it was an American domestic issue. It was the invasion of Iraq, which has nothing to do, as you know, with 9-11. But my point is that the American response, many experts over the last mm. 15 years have said, exacerbated the threat from terrorism. I'm saying is France doing the same thing now? No. The fact is, what, what we have now in Syria, you know, we know that you, you, they are preparing attacks, terrorist attacks against France. So we are not supposed to wait for these terrorist attacks. Uh, when people want to kill you, you have to kill them first. Just before we finish, on your president, uh, we expect the French far-right Marine Le Pen to say outrageous, provocative things. We're not surprised when former President Sarkozy is trying to stage a comeback, says provocative things. But President Hollande, the self-styled socialist, supposedly sober centre-left politician, when he says, quote, it's true that there is a problem with Islam, that's pretty shocking, isn't it? He sounds like Donald Trump. No, it's the question, you know, really, again, it was a, a, a discussion, you know, really, with journalists. And what he's saying, it's a problem with Islam, is we are facing a challenge, how to accommodate our Muslim citizens in a society which was basically built on, on, on Christian or Judeo-Christian roots. We have to do it, and we'll do it. But it will take time. And there will be, again, there will be mi mistakes will be committed. Uh, well, you think it was a mistake for President Hollande to say that no. there was a problem with Islam? No, I'm not ju okay. judging my president. Um, OK. Well, some are judging him and saying that the reason he's engaging in this kind of rhetoric, uh, kind of pandering to anti-Islam prejudice in France, is because he's so unpopular right now. A recent poll found uh, his approval rating to be 4%. 4%. That rounds down to zero, Mr. Ambassador. We are a democracy. We are, you know, we are facing exactly, again, the same crisis than all the Western democracies. 
uh, with a populist outburst, with a, a, a political. But there's no other uh, European with, uh, or Western leader with has a four percent approval rating. Really, as far as with I'm a aware. The, fr the French are very critical. You know, really, we are with a lot, a lot of a, a social, of a social. No, actually, it's not 96 percent because the, the the fall is not this one. But he's unpopular. You know, really, uh, with a social and economic crisis. And, and we have, you know, we'll, the French will decide. In May 2017, there will be the presidential election. In June 2017, there will be the parliamentary elections. So they will decide. Ambassador Arrow, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thank you, Betty. Thank you.